looking at us right now. No one's looking at us. Please be seated. Friends, we're gathered here in the name of God and for the sake of Katie and Cody, whom we know and love, and who now wish to acknowledge the promises that they have made in marriage to one another. Let us gratefully remember that we were created man and woman so that in marriage we discover the fullness of the life we were given at birth. Marriage, therefore, is to be entered into with the spirit of faithfulness, hope, and love, and not lightly or thoughtlessly. It means to cherish a mutual esteem and love, to bear with each other's infirmities and weaknesses, and comfort each other in sickness, trouble, and sorrow. In honesty and industry, they provide for each other and for their household, and in all things they're privileged to live together as heirs of the goodness of life. Friends, congregation, I want to remind you that you're not just spectators, but you're participants in this event, and I invite you to join with me as you're led to participate in Christian worship. So let us begin anew before our God. Let us pray using the prayer that you'll find in your order of worship. Almighty God, our Father, you created us for life together. We confess that we have turned from your will. We have not loved one another as you commanded. We have taken much and given little. O oh God, strengthen us in love so that we may serve you as a faithful people and live together in your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, nothing can separate us from the love of God which is ours in Jesus Christ. Rejoice. In Christ we have a newness of life. Amen. Who gives this woman as wife to this man? Her mother and I. Would the parents and grandparents stand as they're led? And will, will you Grant your blessing and pledge these two your love and acceptance. Will you? We do. In our premarital conversations, I asked Cody and Katie to ponder any number of scriptures that we could use this evening, and they chose perhaps the most famous and most beloved of all. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease, where there are tongues, they will be stilled where there is knowledge, it will pass away. 
For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I became, and I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I'm fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Katie, Cody, I challenge you now with this charge. The course of events in your lives have brought you together in love. You've sought out the church to recognize your commitment to one another, to aid in your preparation for your life together, and to ask for God's aid and loving guidance as you move into your life together as husband and wife. Love. It's a commonly used word. It's spoken much, freely used. But it's also much misunderstood. In marriage, love for one another is understood. It's a given. But as Christians, we understand a special love. And we know this love as we grow as a couple committed to Christ-centered living in Jesus Christ. A man named Paul tells us God's word, God's insights, God's wisdom about real love. But he does so in a peculiar manner. He starts by telling us of the absence of love. Katie and Cody, you may bring many talents, many skills and gifts into your marriage. But it doesn't matter that you're gifted. It doesn't matter that you're charming. It doesn't matter that you have great looks. And you do have that. <laughs> Without love, we're nothing. It doesn't matter that you're a good provider or a great lover. Without love, you're nothing. Love is the greatest gift that you can give one another. Then God describes how a real Christian loves his or her spouse. Love is patient and kind. Now I am sure tonight, Katie and Cody, that you are resolved to be patient and kind. But what about tomorrow? What about next week? What about two weeks from now when you're tired and weary? This is what is meant in this passage. A Christian spouse has no need to boast, to put his or her spouse down, to attack the other's dignity as a creation of God. There's no rudeness, there's no self-seeking, no egotism in a Christian marriage, and you don't keep score what you owe one another. No scorekeeping. No scorekeeping on their successes or their failures, and they may be many. But the love that Jesus Christ offers you too is a love that seeks to build up rather than tear down. Love is patient and kind. Christian love has an enduring significance in a growing relationship between two people and their Lord. Frequently we find ourselves saying, I love you because you're pretty, and you surely are. I love you because you're talented or funny. You're a little funny. But these factors may change. Christian love does not say, I love you because. It simply says, I love you, period. When Christ died for us, he looked upon us and he said, I love you, even though I get nothing from you in return. Our Lord Jesus Christ offers that sort of love to you. We talked about it in my study, agape. Paul says, love never fails. That means the love of a Christian spouse never says, I no longer love you. You may at times feel that. But Christian love is not based upon a feeling, but based upon a commitment. It's not based upon your own strength, your own will, your own determination, none of those things. Children do not understand this, Katie. Children don't understand this, Cody. And there's a whole lot of adults out there that are dressed up like adults, but they live like children. 
Paul says it's time to put those childish ways behind and to grow up and to experience the fullness of the love that Christ has for you. The marriage that Christ invites you to is one born and maintained only through a growing faith in him. Many marriages are made, but too few turn and rely upon Jesus Christ to be their center. It is my prayer, my friends, that Jesus Christ would be that center in all your days to come. Let us pray. O Lord, your presence makes happy our every moment. Your blessing makes holy every relationship. We pray now for these, your servants, whom we love, that they experience the full joy and riches of marriage. Help them to affirm their vows with seriousness, to share their lives with gracefulness, to enjoy the comforts, endure the cares, and perform with dignity the duties of life together in a worthy way and constant companionship, all to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Katie and Cody, the marriage you commit to, that which you have promised to live as husband and wife, you've promised according to the ordinance of God in this holy bond of marriage. Do you so promise? I do. Katie and Cody, join hands as you take your vows. You're first, sir. I, Cody, take you, Katie. I, Cody, take you, Katie. As my loving wife. As my loving wife. And I promise before God and these witnesses. And I promise before God and these witnesses. To love you and be faithful to you to love you and be faithful to you and to Jesus Christ and to Jesus Christ as Christ spirit enables me as Christ spirit enables me I will be your faithful husband I will be your faithful husband in plenty and in want in plenty and in want in joy and in sorrow in joy and in sorrow in sickness and in health in sickness and in health as long as we both shall live as long as we both shall live I Katie take you Cody I, Katie, take you, Cody. You are my loving husband. You are my loving husband. And I promise before God and these witnesses. And I promise before God and these witnesses. To love you and be faithful to you. To love you and be faithful to you. And to Jesus Christ. And to Jesus Christ. As Christ's Spirit enables me. As Christ's Spirit enables me. I will be your faithful wife. I will be your faithful wife. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Is there a token to be given as the sign of the vows that have been taken? I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a sign and a pledge. As a sign and a pledge of our constant faith. Of our constant faith and abiding love. And abiding love. That's bigger. <laughs> I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a sign and a pledge. As a sign and a pledge of our constant faith. Of our constant faith and abiding love. And abiding love. Let us pray. Eternal God, without your grace, no promise is sure. Strengthen Katie and Cody with the gift of your Holy Spirit so they may fulfill the vows that they have affirmed. Fill them with such love and joy that they may build a home where no one is a stranger. Guide them by the power of your word to serve you all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our, our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Katie and Cody. You have taken your vows of marriage before God and in the presence of your family and friends. As a minister of the gospel and by the authority committed to me, for this purpose you are husband and wife. No longer two, therefore be one body. So then what God has united cannot be divided. And you may kiss your wife. Be faithful, be courageous, be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to the gospel and the preaching of Christ, to the only wise God, be glory forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please turn toward the congregation. You are looking at Mr. and Mrs. Cody Miller. I present them to you. Slower, 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 slower. Your, your dress is all up in my. Sh you happy? And my sporting the lip gloss, extra glossy. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh. Oh. Take one out for your. They're all tangled together. Give one to I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm hitched. <laughs> Goodbye, day. Oh. <laughs> 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 